Good evening and welcome back to Answers on Eschatology. My name is Dan Derry and I'm the president of the Institute of Fulfilled Eschatology. Hey, I want to share some more thoughts regarding the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew chapter 25. And specifically, I want to look at the uh, delay of the bridegroom in Matthew 25 verse 5. Now, our futurist premillennial brethren would look at this verse and say, Hey, look, the bridegroom delays. Therefore, he still delays. He hasn't come, but when he does come, one of these days, in these last days, he's going to marry the church. Well, that is completely foreign to the text. This delay of the bridegroom was a one-generation, 40-year delay for a specific purpose concerning Israel. And we're going to see that as we go forward here. And what I want to do is connect this delay of the bridegroom with the day and hour of Matthew chapter 24 and show you that the day and hour that we've already seen that will come at the end of that 40-year delay would be the day and the hour of the coming of the bridegroom to remarry Israel and consummate their wedding uh, banquet. Matthew 25, let's read verses 1 through 5 and we'll jump in. Then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them are foolish and five were prudent. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the prudent took oil in flasks along with their lamps. Now watch this. Now while the bridegroom was delaying, they all got drowsy and began to sleep. Now, no doubt Jesus teaches here that there would be a delay of the coming of the bridegroom. There would be a delay from the time the bridegroom left until the bridegroom returned to receive his bride and uh, close off the door of that wedding to those who had rejected that invitation. But here's the thing. Scripture does not teach a future to us uh, coming of the Lord. Scripture does not teach a, a, a present delay of the bridegroom. This delay was to be a one generation, 40 year delay that would result in the coming of the Lord in that generation to consummate the wedding marriage to Israel. Go with me to 2 Peter chapter 3. And Peter, refuting the scoffers who were scoffing at the promise of the Lord's coming, that is the promise of the coming of the bridegroom to remarry Israel, says this in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slow concerning his promise. Now what promise? Again, this is the promise of his coming. And the promise of his coming was that he was coming in their lifetime. Matthew 16, 27, 28, Matthew 24, 30 through 34, etc. And what Peter says is the Lord was not slow concerning that promise. This Greek word slow is a form of the word delay in Matthew 25. So Peter's really saying, look, if the Lord is not delaying about his promise, watch this, as some count slowness, as some count delay. In other words, Peter's saying, look, it, there is a delay. The Lord promised. He said there would be a delay. But it's not a delay as these men, these scoffers, consider the delay. See, they were saying the Lord has delayed 30 plus years about his coming. He's not coming. And they were scoffing at this promise. Our futurists today, they don't, they don't deny that the Lord is coming. They just completely ignore the time of his coming and say he's still delaying. Well, guess what? The scoffers and the futurists are both wrong. Okay? The Lord was delaying his coming, but not as these scoffers considered the delay. And here's the purpose for the delay, the slowness of his coming. Peter says, But the Lord is patient to you, word, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. The Lord was delaying his coming. Remember, he promised his coming within their lifetime, but he was delaying his coming. He was delaying it for a generation, for 40 years, in order that all might come to repentance. And he was patient, willing that Israel, wishing that Israel would repent, turn to him, would receive his kingdom, receive his salvation, and would be ready for him at his coming to consummate their wedding. This is this, this coming in 2 Peter 3 is the same coming of the bridegroom in Matthew chapter 25. And this delay was not to be forever. It was a delay that Israel might turn, receive their Messiah before that nation was cut off 
in the melting of every element, in the destruction of their old covenant world. Now watch this. When we can compare this idea of the delay of the bridegroom with the writer of what, what the writer of Hebrews says, we understand that this delay was not to be forever. Hebrews 10, 35 through 37, the writer in verse 37 says, For in a very, very little while, the coming one, that is the Messiah, that is the bridegroom, will come and will not delay. See, the delay was almost over. Hebrews was written early to mid-60s, near the end of that generation. And that delay of the bridegroom, in order that Israel might repent and turn to him, was about to be a delay no longer. The Messiah, the bridegroom, was about to come and consummate his marriage with his bride. Now, here's where I want to go next. Go with me back to Matthew 25. And we're going to see that this delay of the bridegroom was to be uh, was to be ended. This delay would cease at obviously the coming of the Lord at the day and the hour. Now watch this. Matthew 25 and verse, let's read verses uh, 9 through, uh, sorry, 10 through 13. And watch this. And while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. So once again, even this text teaches a short delay. Those who had received the oil, who had taken oil, they had received the Spirit. Uh, they had been illuminated through the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. They were ready for the coming of the bridegroom. And when he came, they, were, they had prepared themselves and they went in with him. And the wedding feast took place and the door was shut. And watch what takes place. Later, the other virgins also came saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. But he answered, truly I say to you, I do not know you. Now I'm going to tie, I'm, we're, we're going to comment on these verses in previous video, in, in, in uh, the next videos. But what I'm after is verse 13. Listen to this. Jesus says to them, his disciples, be on the alert then, for you do not know the day nor the hour. Now wait a second. Jesus ties, he connects the coming of the bridegroom and the consummation of the wedding feast with the day and the hour. Well, guess what? Where have we heard that before? We've heard that in Matthew 24. If you recall, this day and the hour is the same day and the hour at the coming of the Son of Man on the clouds of heaven. This is the same coming. The coming of the bridegroom is the coming of the Son of Man. And it's the day and the hour that no one knew. Not the angels, not the Son, but only the Father. But let's take a look at Matthew 24, just to refresh our memories, so we can understand what this day and hour was all about. Because we can, if we can identify the day and the hour of Matthew 24, we will identify this day and hour of the coming of the bridegroom to consummate the marriage of Israel in Matthew 25. Matthew 24, verses 33 and following, watch this. So you too, when you see all these things, recognize that he, that's the Son of Man, is near right at the door. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away. That's the old covenant world, remember? But my words will not pass away. But of that day and hour, what day and hour? The coming of the Son of Man. The judge standing at the door, the passing away of heaven and earth, the judgment of Israel at the end of the age. Of that day and hour, no one knows. Not the angels of heaven, nor the Son but the Father alone, for the coming of the Son of Man will be, etc. This day and hour was the day and hour of the end of the Old Covenant age at the coming of the Son of Man to remove that Old Covenant world and to redeem and gather together His elect. Well, guess what? It's the same day and hour of Matthew chapter 25. What that means is the day and hour of Matthew 25 is the day and hour of the removal of the Old Covenant world at the end of the Old Covenant age in AD 70, when the Son of Man came to gather together His elect. And guess what? His elect were the wise virgins who were gathered together to the wedding feast at the coming of the bridegroom at the end of that Old Covenant age in AD 70. That is powerful stuff. And we'll pick it up next time and we'll share more on the parable of the ten virgins Next time on Answers on Eschatology. Bye for now.